Hello friends, so today we're going to discuss the problem C from the latest ad coder beginner contest 184. This problem uh, seems very difficult and it is a difficult problem but you have to draw some diagrams to make it more clear and it also takes me a while to understand and implement the code itself but I have found an easy way to solve this question and lot of members of my channel also like face problem solving this problem thus I like thought to make a video separately on this problem so let's start this problem the problem statement is simple uh, the problem statement states that you are standing on an infinite two dimensional grid and you are on the piece R1C1 okay and then you can move in this fashion what this this fashion means that if you are standing on this point let's assume then you can move either on the diagonals or in this 3 by 3 grid okay so this is 5 by 5 sorry 5 by 5 grid and including these points also so you can move in this direction or uh, these points or these whole points now uh, so the movement can be described using these three equations so this equation is moving along this this equation is moving along this and this equation is moving along this okay so you have to find out the minimum number of moves so let's assume that you are standing on some position and you have to find out the minimum number of moves to reach to the point r2 c2 from r1 c1 so you have to start at some point and reach at some point using these types of operations now uh, like what to do so draw this test case I'll draw a very large board such that to even make it more clear. Uh, sorry for the bad drawing, but uh, you will hope. I'll hope after end of this video you will get some clear hint about how to solve this problem. Okay, so as you can see, this is a board, and uh, I'll draw it as much space as possible. Yeah. So let's assume that you are starting at this point okay so if you are starting at this point and you can see the test case also uh, maybe the end point is this also so this is the starting point and this is the end point so if you start at this point what is the minimum number of moves to reach exactly this point it's zero because it's zero so i'm just marking out uh, like what is the minimum number of like steps take to reach some position okay now if i want to move along the diagonal only if any point is on the diagonal of this point then it will read like it will only require one step as you can see so if this is a point then along the whole diagonal you can move and you can only you will only be required one step like along this diagonal and along this diagonal okay okay now what about the next next like other blocks okay if you want to reach like this block like or if you want to like reach this block you can go to this block block and then you can go to this block so like as you can see if you are some like if you are at some point which is on this diagonal so then you can reach this point in one step but let's assume that if you want to reach this point so you can go to this diagonal and then to this point so it will require two steps if you want to go like at this point you, you will require two steps so if you want to reach this point you can go to this diagonal and then this point so that like you are moving along the diagonals only this and this then this and this so if you want to reach for this point this is two this is uh, two steps so you can easily see that okay this is two steps then this is two so every alternative element is two like you can always find every alternative elements in just two steps if it is on a diagonal then it will only require one step else you will only require two steps like as you can see if it is on diagonal then like you can directly find out using these equations whether it, it is on a diagonal or not okay and if it is not on the diagonal then if it has the same parity same parity means if this is like an odd number then this is like if, it, if this is an even position then this all should be even positions except this diagonal and all the even positions can be find out in two steps okay now what about these steps if you want to like reach at this position then it's also simple uh, like if you are at this position then you can go to this the next position using because you can go to this diagonal also like with all the grid points so if you are at some like if you are at this position then the empty spaces which is the other parity can be reached in three steps so it's simple to fill out this but there is just one more catch so you can easily find out that okay 
uh, if these are the ones position, two position, three position, whether this is the final matrix. No, there is one more catch. If I can move along this diagonal, as you can see, this is one. If I reach at this point, then after reaching at this point, I can go to this point in two steps. Okay. But because for every point, I can go to its five by cross, five by five matrix also. So if I move to this point, then I can move to this whole matrix in one step. I hope you get my point. So I have to also mark this point. But like for every one, like if I move along this matrix, then for every matrix position along this diagonal, there will be a five by five matrix also like a square five by five, five by five only along this mat, like along this diagonal only, not away from the diagonal. Like if there's a, a huge matrix and like if this is the diagonal let's do, then along the diagonal only I have to take like points or the square matrix or like the squares. If I have to take this point, then I have to check using this parity rule only, which is it is a two or like it is the same parity of zero or not. If the same parity, then two steps else three steps. But if it is along, along the diagonal, then I have to take a square matrix, but checking every square matrix is very like time intensive. So, or like checking every time matrix on every diagonal, it's very time intensive. So what you can do instead, you can only check the matrix of the end position End position means, uh, let's assume that, uh, if this is a matrix and from this point, I want to go to this point, this is the diagonal. So what you can do for this end position, draw the square. Square means like if I'm on this position, what is the square matrix I can move? Because so if this diagonal intersect with this square, so if like the square has some points, this square means this, this square, this square. If this is the final point, and for this final point also, if I draw this square by square, I mean by this is if any square or like this small square intersect with the diagonal, then what I mean by this is because for every diagonal position, for every diagonal square, I can build the whole bigger square. And thus, because this square intersect with this diagonal diagonal line, I can move to the that point, exact point, and then go to this point. Okay. And that's the whole logic. You just have to first check whether it is along the diagonal. If it is no, not along the diagonal, then check whether it is the same parity. If it is not the same parity, then for the final point, build this matrix, this five by five square and check that whether any block in this five by five square intersect with the diagonal of this main diagonal, because if it is intersecting, then I can extend to that diagonal point and then go to that five by five square. I hope you get the point because uh, let's assume that this is the square. Then uh, if this is the diagonals, then what I can do if this is just uh, the ending point, then I can see that my ending point square is like this. So what I can do from this point, I can go to this intersection and then because this is a square I am in and thus I can go and build this square and reach from this point to this point in two steps. And that's also simple. And if I cannot reach in two steps, then the answer is all obviously three steps because in more than three steps in three steps, I can reach any point. I hope you get from this final condition. So that's the logic for this problem. I didn't know the code, but now you can also see the code in the description. So, uh, this is just math intensive, nothing else. So uh, this is a solve function, take the input of R1 and C1. So this is swapping out. Swapping out means that, uh, I just taken out, this is not very necessary, but I've just taken out because that is in that I am only assuming that from this point, I am going to this point. So R1 is on the left and R2 is on the right. So that it is simple to move from R1 to R2, but, uh, because the math is simple then, but if you assume that R1 is like this and R2 is this point, then, uh, the math is reversed. So instead what you can do, you can take this to be R1 and this to be R2 because moving from this to this or this to this, it's the same. So, uh, if this is R2, and this is R1, which is mean that I have to go from this to this. So just reverse it out and make this R1 and this is R2. So that uh, R1 is always to the left of R2. That's what, that's what I'm swapping because it makes the math simple. So if R1 is greater than R2, which means that if R1 is right on the R2, then just swap it out. 
so there are three cases the first is if both like if r1 is equal to r2 which means that the final end point is same then answer is zero because we are on the end point then what the second condition is if they are on the diagonal so this is a check function which just implementing these three conditions i'm just implementing these three conditions a plus b equal to c plus d which is like these coordinates a plus b means the a is a starting coordinate and b is the ending coordinate c d is the end one so according to me the starting is coordinate is r1 c1 and ending is r2 c2 so that's what i'm checking uh, these just just the three conditions i have written down here so i'm just checking out that if it the starting coordinate and the ending coordinate follows this condition because if it lies on the diagonal on or in the first square then the answer is just one else i have to check the parity so the first parity is r1 c1 obviously and the second parity is r2 c2 so because the summation of them will tell me the parity and if the parity is same then the answer is just 2 i have already told you else what we can do for the final matrix for the final point i have to go to its because see this is if this is 0 comma 0 then this is minus 2 and this is plus 2 so uh, this is this is 2 by 2 matrix because uh, Above it is two because it is five by five matrix, but uh, the above is two minus two. So from minus two to plus two for rows and column, I will find out the new point. So which means that for this point, I will like for the ending point, I will calculate all of these points. So for the ending point, which is R two C two, I will calculate all the P Q these points and check that whether all of these points, any of these points, lie on the diagonal. Lie on the diagonal means that uh, how we can check that on the diagonal. I will take the first point R one C one and this is the ending point, which are all of these points and check that whether any one of them lies on the diagonal or following these conditions for the starting so if i am the starting point and if i want to reach any of these points which is constituting the last point then it is simple because from that point i can go to this point any of these points and then come to this point and that's what i'm checking the answer is two only else i have to also check these four points because in this matrix i am only checking these points these four points are also excluded so this is Like this point plus three minus three and like so on. So that I'm also checking out these four points here, and if these four four points also intersect with the starting point, then the answer is also two. Because see, if from the starting point I can reach this matrix somehow, then from this matrix I can go to the center point, which is the final point. So that's the answer two. But if any of these condition doesn't match, the answer is just three. So that's the logic for this problem. If you still have any doubts, please feel feel to ping me on my Telegram channel or in the comment box. I am very happy to reply all the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding. Bye.